I am Latoya Benton. Xavier killed my son. He was murdered by the state police on January the 9th, 2021. The ball bird. He was murdered by DC Metropolitan the police in their custody. He died in their custody. And they claim that they don't know what happened. They had they had no business arresting him. This is Life After the Impact, a podcast for impacted families, by impacted families, that focuses on what happens after the media, the lawyers, and the activists are gone. Impacted families are left to face uh, the loss of a loved one to police-sponsored violence. We will focus on their continued fight for justice and how you can get involved. Good evening. My name is Roxanne Johnson. My son, Jamal Bird, was uh, killed by Metropolitan Police, DC Metropolitan Police, October 1st, 2019. And I'm here with my co-host this evening. Good evening, you guys. My name is Latoya Benson. My son is Xavier Hill. He was shot and killed by Virginia State Police at the age of 18 on January the 9th, 2021. Tonight we have guests. Uh, Marissa, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, please? Yes, thank you. Um, good evening, everybody. My name is Marissa Barrera. I live in Sacramento, California. My brother is Michael Barrera, who was killed by Woodland Police in 2017. And um, thank you for having me as a guest and for joining you guys. That was a really great trailer, by the way. Okay. Music got you hype, right? It makes you want to go like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so exactly. We're, so, we're so glad to have you this evening. Tell us a little bit about the situation that, um, that took the life of your brother. Yeah, so it, we just hit the six-year mark um, on February 8th. And... So as you mentioned about your son, for my brother, uh, the police had no reason to be trying to arrest him. He died while in their custody. And there were five officers involved. My brother was targeted by these officers. Uh, one of the officers had assaulted him just one month prior, and he had assaulted my brother while other people were present, it's documented and everything. And my brother was telling us, you know, between this month about the harassment happening from police, specifically uh, Officer Richard Wright. And sadly, like, like have, as I've come to find a lot of other victims say um, that the police had harassed them or threatened to kill them. My brother wow. had told us that. So when he was killed by five officers, he was uh, beaten, excessively tased. He was uh, sat on by multiple officers. His limbs were twisted, ways they don't go. He, um, this was about four and a half minutes long and he was already in handcuffs within the first 20, 20 seconds or so. You can hear it in the audio that we have. And even more officers came to um, harm him and the last officers, the one that I mentioned, Officer Wright, my brother was already face down in the mud with officers on top of him. He had been excessively tased for 24 seconds straight and beaten. And then that officer came, started stomping on my brother's head, stomping on his head while he's down. And um, he then sat on Michael from his back as well as another officer that was doing that to his lower body and his last words were, I can't breathe. There was other words exchanged. The officer did refer to my brother as Mr. Barrera and uh, it was definitely personal. It was about four, uh, like I mentioned earlier, the first taser, it started, at, it lasted four and a half minutes long. And um, yeah, it's just very brutal. And like some of the ones, you know, a lot of the ones we've seen videos of, so that's the incident. Uh, they they lied. They also at first said my brother just died. Mm -hmm. That was their story. He just died. And then it was he just died from the taser. And 
Um, but yeah, we've gotten the documents, the, the videos, uh, the audio. And so now the truth has been revealed, but it took years to get there. So were the officers indicted at all with the Brothers case? No, not at all. So I feel, so that was in 2017. My brother's killers were quickly cleared uh, within six months. They cleared them all. Uh, there was no investigation truly done. They just said, would they want the narrative, which was that my brother attacked them, that my brother was a crazy man. They tried to uh, say my brother was naked. Well, this, that was their first narrative, but I quickly found uh, surveillance and stuff. The first, the next d day, I actually got surveillance from my brother's apartment that it, I got to piece together some of the story early on. So to know that they were lying, but yeah, it's just so extreme to what, what really happened and then what we've come to find to be true. Yeah. Yeah. So no charges. Um, we are going through. I mean, we, we want that, you know, like all of us families, right? We, we want them to have criminal charges and we would, we, if, if it was in our power, we would make it happen. We, we are trying, but uh, we do have a federal uh, civil wrongful death lawsuit. So we are actually going to be starting our trial. I, we don't have a date. We had a date before, but our case uh, was in the appeals courts. Um, they're trying to appeal, and because the officers were denied qualified immunity one year ago, and the officers are trying to appeal that decision. Um, no, real, real fast, we didn't go into that. I want, I want you kind of to explain to people um, the process of that. Once you file a lawsuit, you guys filed a civil suit when? So we filed it within that first year. So it was in 2018. My brother was killed February uh, 2017. So we did it before everything was, we had to have a tort claim. Um, so What's your had, state statute? I, it was a year. I heard it's wow. six months now. Someone just told me six months. So it might be, but we did get a lawyer. We were advised to find a lawyer right away because they were going to help us. So we did that. Unfortunately, we had a, a horrible experience with our first lawyers, but he did get us that claim filed so that we were at least in the door. I know a lot of families, you know, that's the last thing. I mean, we don't just want to go searching for lawyers while we're trying to grieve, but it's important because after you grieving, I've seen it happen to a lot of families. They're grieving. It and a time like, frame. Yeah. Yes. And then yeah. they can't do anything. It's not yeah. right. It's not fair, yeah. but that's, part of this system. Mm -hmm. Well, Marissa, yeah, cer certainly um, just our condolences of the loss of your brother. And I know your mm -hmm. family has been struggling because we know the struggle. This is a um, kind of a, or, uh, a society or organization that we don't want, nobody wants to be in, but we find ourselves in the, these positions because of the violence that the police perpetrate on our loved ones, right? So how how has your family been dealing with this? And are there any um, action items? Because we, on this podcast, we're about um, collectively coming up with some action items. So what was going on in your, in your brother's case? So everything you said, yes, absolutely agree. And with my brother's case, you know, it's just kind of been, you know, and it's been in a weird place, uh, ups and downs of when we're getting information. We feel like things are coming along, but with our, our DA, like he's been there for 20 years and he's he's known for the racism, for the power, um, just the abuse that he's done, even internally in his own, within his own employees. So we, you know, we don't have, I wish we could had something where we can do the charges, but we are hoping to get through this civil trial. That's where uh, we have been trying to raise awareness on this. Our hopes are go through this trial, have it all documented out. The truth is out there, which is a lot of things they're trying to hide. But uh, yeah, so people can at this link that's right there. Um, yeah, if you guys just look on the screen here, the screen is sharing right now is the link for the family's page, for the family's website, actually, and how you can go on to support. Um, as she was saying earlier, they don't, they're currently in a federal um, civil suit. 
that and I got granted qualified immunity is to my, it's going back to the state court, right? Melissa, is that correct? Yes. So it's going back to the district judge of the federal court. So, uh, in that, so this just happened. So everything's just kind of moving right now. Right. Um, like last so, week, right? Yes. We just got the decision that we won our hearing in the appeal court. Um, that we won, the judges sided with us, no qualified immunity. So now uh, it's back to the district judge. We are waiting uh, to hear back for either they're going to give us a trial date. And sometimes with uh, families, this could happen. It could happen quick. They might get us on right. the calendar quick. And the last time we've seen Judge Mendez um, before the appeal, he had, he kind of seemed like he wanted to get it on there quickly because we've been it's been so long now so our hope is that in the next couple months that we could get through this trial finally get it get it behind us and go through with it uh, marissa how can we help you with this action what what can we do as a community supporting you and the um in your wrongful death lawsuit yeah so uh we we are asking you know, people local people if you know the welcome court support is needed for all families when sometimes mm -hmm. um that's at something yes at the courthouse so anybody locally you know we don't like i said we don't have a date yet so if you go to the page uh you we're gonna be sending updates so once we get the trial date and all that we'll be sending that i'll be posting that and then for now um after, we are working right now on some letters that we will be sending out with new evidence that we've discovered in the last I just we just got stuff in the last month I'd say there's stuff that we uncovered it's from their own evidence but it's you know there's so many hours of video and audio and stuff to go through I've, I've went through most of it myself including my brother's full death but you know I found pieces where they're you know they're they're saying a lot of things that are uh, proving them to be guilty of murder. So uh, we we want these facts to come out and we want charges to be pressed. Um, this DA, as I mentioned, in our county, he's horrible, but he does try to come off as a progressive DA. I mean, I think for my family, I don't see him ever charging cops, but he's got to get out of there sometime. And I know there's no statute of limitation for murder. out. So that's our hope. And uh, for now, we, we need we definitely need support for uh, the the trial coming up. Um, I'm I'm really scared. I'm scared to go through the trial. I've seen every piece of evidence, and from the pictures to listening to it, because part of my brother's death it it is on uh, full audio, but part of the video he's pulled out of the view, so you hear everything, and it's really horrible. And I'm just I'm just scared for my family to see it and hear it and but I know it's something we have to get through um so just as we're going through this trial I just ask people to um help us share share all of this and support our family through what, I went you? yeah I actually sat on a trial for a, a friend of mine her son that was killed by SAC PD in October and mm. it's the same courtroom the same judge so yeah. I got a kind of like I've heard a lot of stories. Yeah, I've heard a lot from the families, you know, and yeah, it's it's really hard for the family. So that's where I'm trying to preserve my energy and trying to just really uh, help, help my family through this too. Mm -hmm. well, we'll definitely applaud you guys for not giving up. That's a long fight. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And so people um, that are listening to this podcast can go on voicesofstrength.com i info i n f o and put their name and their email address and then you'll keep them updated as to when the trial comes and um so that they can um uh, be abreast of of the action so if they're in the area they can pack the courtroom if not is, is there um like a number we can do we need to, i mean it sounds like another maybe a possible long-term uh action could be to get this uh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Go, he right? just he, he, he almost got he almost got kicked out he almost you know he had a competitor recently mm -hmm. uh she didn't it, you know she 
people love him there. It's, it's, a, it's a very racist community. He's um, rooted into the system. Yes. And, you know, uh, they do dirt with each other. So they they have to keep, you know, so. Um, yeah. But, yeah. But like, uh, just like uh, Latoya just said that, you know, it's very uh, commendable that you haven't given up. Don't give up. Um, our loved ones, their voices, as long as we keep their names alive. The they, voice that we have to. Yeah, um, and saying their names and speaking mm -hmm. on their behalf, their, mm -hmm. their life demands justice, right? Mm -hmm. So we won't stop fighting. We won't stop saying their name. We won't start, stop uh, remembering what happened to them until justice is done. That's right. Right? That's right. Yes. Um, go on to voicesofstrength.info, put your name and your email in the in the um and join the campaign to help um Marissa and her family to get justice. See, because the way the way that it works, y'all, this the, the uh law of reciprocity. If Marissa gets uh justice for her, we husband, all get it. We all get justice. Yes. And people have to realize that. they gotta realize too the importance of even with her case to of them being qualified immunity in that area. Mm -hmm. When families stick into the fight and people gotta realize too, when it comes to civil lawsuits, people love to say, oh, it's blood money. No, it's setting precedents for other cases that are behind these cases. So you can prove a point. So it's very important her family sat in the fight and is stuck in the fight. So that we realize that you can you can be qualified immunity. You got to stick in the fight. You got to be persistent and consistent in order to, to be called immunity. Like your, your family actually did. You guys did it. Yeah, and, and exactly what you're saying. Also, you know, it's, there's so many families are going to experience those times when they're trying to force mm -hmm. us to take a settlement, force us to mm -hmm. just drop it, scare us Can't out of it. That. It's happening so much, you know, yeah. and I understand it's a scary place for families to be. I knew with my brother's case specifically and the evidence we have, once it's actually pulled out, you know, you'd it's it's there. They've right. the whole they world. Can't hide, man. Yes. It, and and you know, I feel bad for families if we don't have the evidence, if we don't have the videos, mm -hmm. if there were no witnesses, I'm thankful that we eventually, you know, it took years to get what we got, but I Got am it. thankful that we know the truth because it's what I always knew, but I didn't have the physical evidence. And now we do. So I tell families, you know, fight, just fight it. Stick with it. Stick with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Is there, um, is there anything else you would like us to know about? Um, let's say his name. I just feel like we want to say his name. Mike, did he go by Mike, Big Mike Barrera? Yes, he did, and he loved that. A big, big Mike, Mike Big Mike. That's before he. The picture is before he got Big Mike. He would have probably preferred me show you guys that one, but <laughs> this one here, yeah. okay. It and was this, a brand new daddy. Is this his daughter that, that he's holding. Is this his daughter that he's holding? Yeah, that's when he was a nineteen-year-old new dad. Oh, wow. he is six, 16 years old now. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Was oh, the baby's sixteen, really? Yeah, and she's uh, started yeah. to speak about her dad for the first uh, time this year. A couple times she has spoken at events we had. You know, she's she's getting the the strength to do it, mm -hmm. but it just you know it's not right. But this is the reality, you know. And thank you guys for highlighting these things and in the show because mm -hmm. it's it's important for mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. to see you want to highlight the impact it has on you guys after the fact. Like you said, you got a 16 year old niece who's there without a dad, you know, so the impact on that, I can only imagine. Yeah, it's it's really hard. You know, we, we already know it's hard in the teenage years and things like yeah. that, but to have your, your daddy ripped away from you, mm -hmm. it's it's hard. It's hard for us to still talk about, but you know, we, we have to get through it. Okay. Right. Little big Mike. All right, Big Mike with the smoke. Oh, Big Mike right there. Look at Big Mike. Yeah, you can see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But, we, we, you know, we like to see pictures of our loved ones because we want the world to know that these were human beings. Real people. Their lives mattered, that they mm -hmm. mattered to us because we loved them and they loved us. And um, we are not going to rest. <laughs> mm -hmm. We are mm -hmm. not going to rest until justice is served. Right. And that means that these, these racist, violent, 
police have to be removed or it's going to cost uh, uh, society a lot of money to mm -hmm. uh, continue to support uh, murderers. Bad apples. Yeah, murderers. Yeah. Yeah. So murderers. one more time, uh, before we go, so do you mind please putting up on the, uh, the screen again on people who are watching this podcast, uh, as you say that the family is currently in the trial, uh, we're going to be getting a trial date here pretty soon. In the meantime, you guys can go visit this website. Um, like I say, I, my, my phone is far away. What is it? Voices? Voicesofstrength.info. I love it. I love that. Voices of yeah. strength. Because we, you know, we we strong. We not, yeah. what has happened to us is is devastating down to the, to your, to your mm -hmm. core, to your soul, yeah. your very soul. But yeah. It's that that same that inner strength and the strength of community that's going to keep us strong and keep that's us. Right. Yeah, that's right. And staying in the fight. So, Marissa, I'm very encouraged by your story. Like I said, because by you guys staying in the fight, it just shows that it's, it's not a short thing. You know, it's something. It's, it's a reality. It's a daily day reality and whatnot. You live every single day, and people have to realize that families are impacted, not just when this occasion happens. Is not when the anniversary is or whatnot. It's a daily thing that we are impacted by every single day. So I thank you just for staying in the fight so, um, so I can like look for other people as well or whatnot, you know, say, hey, she stuck it out and you got to stuck it out and actually you got what you're looking for because you stuck it out. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> yes. It's power to you, my sister. And we'll, um, we'll be following up with you and for those families who are listening to this and they may have or want to find out how they can get help to um, get their cases um, adjudicated in a legal in a legal matter, um, we have a Google form on our website, Life After the Impact. Fill it out and we'll get in touch with you. We are in the process of, of forming some research teams and doing We're going to figure it out together. Figure it out together as a community. Right. We are stronger together, y'all. We are right. stronger together. So let's stick together and, and um and win this fight. <laughs> Keep in mind, you guys, we're not claiming to have all the answers, but we do want to spend the time trying to figure out the answers. So that's all we got for tonight. Marissa, thank you for coming on and being a guest for tonight. You guys, please follow her Facebook page, follow her story. If you guys are in the area, when she puts on there, they're going to have a trial. Pat the courthouse. That is important. That is super important to the judge to know that the family cares, but also the community cares as well about the family too. Yes. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. So Thank you, ladies, so much for having me. And I enjoyed chatting with you, ladies, and uh, just sending you all my love and, and the families who are watching as well. Any okay. updates, as you send it to us, we can share it. Please do. Please send it to us. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you know what? I, I, you guys, I, I will be doing that Google form and connecting with you guys too, because that's something I'm uh, working on my brother's case. I'm looking at it from an angle and I know families need guidance and uh, we're right. working on some stuff too in Voice of Strength. So right. um, I'll be connecting. That's so, link. That's yeah. great. That sounds great. Yeah. You know, yeah. Right. Until next time. You guys time. giving me chills too. Yeah. <laughs> that's when you know it's good. Oh, they, they, mess good. Wrong, they, didn't mess, they didn't mess with the wrong people, Melissa. They, <laughs> they have messed with the wrong people. But it's still exactly. that it's been life after the impact. We all about the struggle. We all about the struggle, but we are about action. Everybody can do something. Find out how you can get involved. Don't sit silently because silence is compliance. Until next time, peace. Good night, guys.